Welcome back, everybody. It's My Og Monday. So I decided I'd show you guys something, uh, teach you how to do something that you might need to do in the future. And that is put a handle on a new tool or an old tool. I found this little, um, I believe they call, they call these shinglers hatchets. Because one side is like a hammer, the other side is like a hatchet, and it's got a little nail pull right there. And I found this in the woods. I literally tripped over it. It had uh, a broken off handle right here. It was partially rotted, so I know it had been out in the woods for a while. And if you look at the, if you look at the end... It looks like somebody's been beating this, beating rocks with this thing. It's pretty beat up. And at one time it had a black finish on it. Hmm, look at that. Made in the USA. So I went to the hardware store. I purchased this replacement handle, which is for, I don't know if you can see that. It says right there. Uh, for Scout Camp and Belt Axe. And that's also made in the USA. Walnut Ridge, Arizona. So it's a shout out to you, Arizona. So I'm going to show you how to fit this and put it together. And then we're going to sharpen this and clean it up. And I may even repaint this. And I'm going to have a nice little, uh, nice little hatchet. So, let's get started. <clears throat> First thing is, we're going to determine how much material we need to take off. And basically, we're going back to here, and we're going to taper this back. So we're going to remove this material here. So let me get a uh, tool out get set up and I'll bring you right back and show you how I'm going to do that. Alright, we are back. We have our handle in the vise here and I got a few tools. I've got a block plane I'm going to use to kind of take some material off here and I've got this Stanley uh, pocket sure form which is kind of like a cheese grater for wood and that'll help me contour this. So Basically, we're just nibbling away at it. You could use power tools to do this too, but you might take off too much material too quickly. I like using hand tools because it gives me the opportunity to fit this correctly without going too far. And I'm getting there. Yep, got to take off some more. So I'm going to go ahead and work at this, I'm going to pause the camera, I'll bring you back when I've got the basic shape, and we will go from there. Alright everybody, took a little bit of shaping, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of working, but I think we got it, because here is our and look how that goes together okay now we got quite a distance to go to get it in there but I'm gonna show you a little trick that my father showed me a long time ago on how to set a head like this now this works for just about any tool let me get that off there and what you need is you need a heat source well I have this plumbing torch Typically what you would do is you'd take an axe head or a hatchet head like this and you would put it next to a campfire and slowly warm it up. You don't want to get it hot, you just want to get it warm. Then you would start seeding the head and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to use this plumbing torch, we're going to slowly warm this up, we're going to see if we can do this without messing it up. Make sure there's no stuff in there. All right. And we just want to get this warm, not hot. In fact, 
I'm touching it so I can tell when it's warm. Because what we want is we want the steel to expand a little bit. But we don't want to lose the temper. So we're just warming this up. And once I can feel heat over here where I'm holding it, then it's warm enough. Let me change this angle here. There we go. So you guys can get a better look at what I'm doing. And I'm feeling warmth, so I would say that's warm enough. So we want to get that started. Then what we're going to do, let me swing you over, is we want to hold this like this, hit this end with a soft hammer. And what that's doing, look at that, it's almost done. It drives that wood in. Almost there. I'm loosely holding this in my hand as I do this. Almost done. Almost. That last little bit's always rough. Yeah, we still got a little bit there to go. Almost. I just want this flush up here. Ooh, that is still warm. Yeah, in the old days, like I said, they used to put an axe head next to a campfire and do this. And it would they'd let it slowly warm up. Unfortunately, I don't have a campfire right now. Oh, look at that. Almost there. So close. So I'm just going to keep smacking it. And this is a, uh, I believe this guy is a two pounder. Yep, two pounder. Soft faced hammer. I use this for metal work and a little bit of everything. It's a very handy tool. Uh, she's starting to just start to come out. We're almost there. Just to save wear and tear in my hand. Because unfortunately, this handle is like shellacked. And that shellac causes blisters. It's not going to matter with what I do to it. You'll see. But uh, I don't want to get any blisters doing this. That'd be silly. Alright. Yep, it's cresting. It's starting to come out. I just want to get this back side here to start coming out. And as you can see, we're just getting a little bit right there, and that's fine. We will clean that up when we are done. Yep. And you can do this with any tool, a hammer, just about anything. It's almost out. It's starting, it's out on this side. You generally want this just poking out of the end, just a little bit. 
So we're almost there. I know I keep saying that. It's like I'm driving the car and there's kids in the back seat. Are we there yet? We're almost there. So I hope everybody's weekend was good. Mine was okay. Could have been a little better, but it is what it is. I am thankful to have a weekend off here and there so I can get things done around the house and shoot a video now and again. Okay. Almost there. All right. Wrap this up. All right, that's just about crested. I know I keep saying I'm almost there, and literally I almost am. Whoops, don't want to hit the tripod. That would suck. Okay, you know what? We're there. We got it where we want it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get us set up for the next uh, step here, and I'll bring you back. All right, everybody. So we got this in. We got the handle protruding. It's pretty well seated. We're pretty good. We had a tiny bit of curling right here, but I just used uh, a pocket knife. I just used my pocket knife to remove that curling. Sorry, I forgot to turn the camera on. So they give you a wood wedge with this. And the wood wedge, I put a little bit of, of a dark Sharpie right here. That's where the wood wedge goes. And you can see my mark. I need to cut this wedge down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and bring it right back for the next step. Okay. So we have our tight bond wood glue. We have our cut down wedge. And we're gonna to try to fit it in there. I don't know if it's gonna go in because this is a really, really tight fit. So if it uh, if it doesn't go in, then I'm just gonna drive a steel wedge in there and we're gonna call it good. Cause I don't I don't mind that. Not a not a huge deal. Okay, just a little bit of wood glue here on the tip. All right, let's get this lined up. See if I can drive it in. And it's already buckling. Nope. It's not wanting to go in. Hey, that it just split. It only wants to go in where that little hole is, so guess what? That's what I'm going to drive in. I'm going to drive that little piece in. Alrighty. So, that's all I could get drove in there. And that's fine. Because it did spread that just a little bit. On a large, large, like, two-bit axe or something like that, that wouldn't be acceptable. But a little small hatchet like this, not a big deal. Because in the same packet, they give us this little steel wedge. And what that is meant for is after you do this, you're supposed to put this in here, like, kind of at an angle like this, and drive it in. So we will see if we can do this without messing it up. Woo. 
want to go in. Let me get a heavier hammer, like this ball peen. All right, that is not coming out. <laughs> That's pretty much in there for the life of the tool. Or until I break the handle. Okay. And that is how you rehandle a tool. Now, let's review real quick what we did. We shaped the end of this to fit in here. Once I was happy with the shape, we then lightly heated the tool up. You don't want to get it so hot that you can't handle it with your bare hands. All right. Then we held it inverted, tapped on the end of the handle, and the weight of the head and the countering force of this handle being drove in, drove it in past this neck here. Then we tried to drive in our wooden wedge, which really didn't work. And then we said, to heck with it, and we put our steel wedge in. That's not going to go anywhere. But we're not done yet. I want to make sure that this is fully serviceable. And we got to do something about this silly finish on this handle. So let me grab a few things. I'll bring you back for the next step. All right, everybody. So. You can go ahead, you could strip this handle and then treat it with linseed oil and that would be a lot better on you than this lacquer. This lacquer will just create blisters on your hand, I'm warning you. But I got some hockey tape here and I'll show you what I like doing for a tool like this. I'm going to try to keep this in camera, I'm sorry if I go off camera, but it is what it is. So generally, whoops kicking the camera around. Generally you take the tape, you go over the end, kind of like this. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this tape back. See I'm slowly coming back covering this. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect, it just has to be on there. Because what we're about to do next will really make it, I guess, pretty depending on your uh, point of view. Okay. So I got that end all covered. Now I'm gonna start working this tape. I'm gonna work this tape up the shaft to about here. So I'm going to knock that out. I love hockey tape. It is extremely useful. I do this to a lot of my hand tools that I take into the outdoors because it doesn't matter what kind of weather you're in, wet weather, cold weather, this, what I'm going to show you here, gives you a great, great grip. And you do not want to lose control of even a hatchet due to lack of grip or a bad grip. You can seriously injure yourself slip and hit yourself in the legs, hit one of your major arteries, you could die. So, something to keep in mind. <laughs> okay, so I got as much of the handle covered as I want. I'm going to go ahead and cut this tape off. Alright, so I got that all covered, right? Now, you can see there's still a little bit of this handle here. I'm going to put a piece of tape going around here like this, and I'm going to show you this next cool step. It's 
Also, while you're doing this, you could work a little loop in here if you wanted to. Me, I don't really care because I'm going to make probably a uh, a mask for this to cover everything. But some people some people get a little bit crazy about their gear and I understand. I used to be that way. Now I'm just more or less concerned with is it going to work? That's more important to me than how it looks. Okay. Now, let's get this set up for the next step. Okay. So, we have the tape right here. And we're going to pull out a whole bunch of extra tape. You want roughly double the length of the handle, and then you're going to spin the tape. And I'll show you what that looks like here since I get this spun up. We're making like a little rope, okay? So there's a rope. Now, we're going to affix that to the handle, and it creates this textured surface. As soon as I get it, I will show you. I'm sorry I got to do some of this off camera. It's just really difficult because I do want to get this correct. <laughs> okay. All right. You see, you got like this rope that goes down the length. That's something better for you to grip on. Here's the end of the tape. Now we're just going to start wrapping once again and now we're going to go back down the handle and cover this but that texturing will still be there and it's going to give you an amazing grip. It doesn't care if it's raining or cold or whatever. Gloves or no gloves, you're going to have an amazing grip on this tool. And if you do care about looks, if you just take your time doing this, it will look pretty nice, which I'm going to show you. I'm actually rushing here, and it's looking pretty good. <clears throat> I'm so happy I found this in the woods. It always amazes me the stuff people lose in the woods. But I guess some people just got more money than sense. Must be nice to be having that much money. I wouldn't know. <laughs> okay. Of course, now the tape is fighting me. I want it to do one thing and it's doing another. All right, let me let me cut this off because it's fighting with me terribly. I'm not in the mood to fight with a roll of tape. See that? It was fighting me. It decided, nope, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. So I said, okay, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> almost done folks and then I'll show you the end result and all we were doing is we were rewrapping the handle down the other direction boy and one of those times I wish I had four hands I tell you Okay, so there it is all done. You can see we got this ridged surface that runs the length of the handle that we wrapped. That will give you 
excellent control with this tool. All right, now we only have one final thing to do. We gotta clean this up, and I gotta reprofile this from where somebody beat the hell out of it. And uh, yeah, so let me get set up and I'll bring you right back. Okay, we're back. I got my auto body disc grinder. And don't worry, I will mute the volume so you don't assault your eardrums. We got our hatchet secured in the vise, so... Oh, I gotta shut the door here, because I don't want to send that noise throughout the house. So let's do this. Okay, that side there is pretty much profiled. Ugh. I can just get this out. I need to flip it. Now we do the other side. Ugh. Murphy, leave me alone, please. Murphy's here. I can tell everything's going wrong. Senior Murphy, please, no. I'm trying to do a video, Murphy. Leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> Murphy will not leave me alone. Okay. Am I still in camera? Yeah, I'm still in camera. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Okay, I gotta do some more grinding, some more cleaning here. I gotta get take a wire wheel to this. Rather than show you all that mess and make this video longer than it needs to be, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera, do that real quick, and bring you back. All right, we're back. I use a wire wheel. I cleaned it up really good. I reprofiled the hammer head and uh, took some off the edges here where it was starting to mushroom. Now you can see the USA, the B proof mark. There's another uh, one here and I think that's for one pound. I think that's the weight of the tool. So now I need to mask this part off here where the edge is going to be and I need to mask this part of the handle off and give this a uh, quick paint job. So let me go get my tape, get this set up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I got this taped off, what I don't want painted, here the edge where I'm going to work it on and you know sharpen it, but everything else this part of the wood here. I don't care if I get any paint in here. It doesn't really matter to me. So, let's do these. Just a little bit of flat black Rust-Oleum. And 
this old boy will be back in service. I sure want to thank whoever uh, left this in the woods for me. I really appreciate it. I was actually thinking on buying a uh, small hatchet to use in the outdoors, so I put a pretty heavy coat on there. And uh, now I just got to let it dry. Oh, I see a spot I missed. There we go. Now I just need to let this dry. And uh, then we can peel the tape off. So I'm going to put it here in this vise. And I'll pull you back and give you a better view of this. So there it is. It needs to dry. And uh, Murphy was here. He's no longer here. He left. He uh, he wounded me and he ran away. So <laughs> gotta love it. So look out. Murphy might be coming to your house next. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'll bring you back probably tomorrow and we will wrap this video up when I give this a nice edge. All right, everybody, it's the next day. I've somewhat healed up from Murphy's attack, and uh, the paint looks dry. So we're gonna take this tape off, we're gonna touch up that preliminary edge. I got an oil stone here. And then we're gonna go cut up some uh, dead wood and stuff I got out back. I'm burning a stump out currently, so this will get Look at that. Ain't that nice? So. So, I hope everybody's weekend has been going, has went well. I'm enjoying this long Labor Day weekend. I have no idea when I'm gonna post this, but when I do, I got a little bit of a burr right there. All right, that's got a really nice edge on it. So we're gonna go outside and chop some stuff up. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta take off this blue tape here. <laughs> eventually I think I'll come back with the hockey tape and wrap this area here too just for looks not for anything else it's already a black tool why not make the whole thing black you know not that I'm concerned about looks but hey why the heck not right And that's the cat on the other side of the door, desperately wanting out here into the workshop because power tools and cats don't mix. All right, so there we are. Let's head outside. All righty, so I got some deadfall out here. I'm chopping up to put on a fire. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. You know, there's nothing like having a tool that was almost free because I did pay like six dollars and some change for the handle and of course a little bit of time to uh, fix it up so pretty good deal I think oh yeah you know this has just got enough weight to power through this deadfall but not be overly heavy. Well, there we go. And that handle is still very solid. I don't have to worry about that coming apart and got a really good grip on it. So I hope you enjoyed this Myog. 
I hope you learned something and I hope to see you later out in the woods. I'll catch y'all later.